This is going to be a short mathematical exercise to prove that it's okay when dealing with a set of objects to express the kinetic energy as two parts, one from the group as a whole, its total mass and its center of mass velocity, and the other from the individual elements making up the set, their individual kinetic energies, with respect to the center of mass of the set. This also is perfectly valid for an extended object, because an extended object is merely a set of the elementary particles that make it up. So to state it formally, the kinetic energy of a system of n particles is just the sum of all n of the individual particle's kinetic energy. The trick will be to partition it into two pieces, one for the whole system and one for the individual pieces relative to the average, which I've said is the center of mass. And we'll show that doing this partitioning gives us the correct result, that they're interchangeable. So we'll start with defining some different velocities. V sub i will be the velocity of the ith particle in the reference frame of your laboratory. In that same reference frame, V sub cm is the velocity of the center of mass. That's defined as the sum of the individual momenta divided by the total mass. V prime is the velocity of particle i relative to that center of mass. So from that, we see that V sub i is just V prime sub i plus the velocity of the center of mass, or equivalently, we can say that V prime sub i equals V sub i minus V of the center of mass. Again, the total kinetic energy of the system is the sum of the kinetic energies of the individual particles. Since V sub i, the velocity of the ith particle, can be expressed as the velocity of the center of mass plus the relative velocity of the particle in the center of mass, I'll express V sub i as that sum. Since I'm squaring V sub i, I have to square that binomial. Now we see that I've got a dot product in here. This is necessary when doing the square. Actually, when I'm squaring a vector, I'm dotting it with itself. Two terms, we can keep the square and don't need to worry about the vector notation. The cross term, however, where we're multiplying the two different vectors by each other, we have to keep the dot product notation. Next, I'll distribute the 1 half m through each of these terms to get three separate summation terms. Now to repeat our conclusion from the last slide, I'm going to do a little rearranging. In the first term, the summation of m sub i is the only part that actually needs to worry about the summation. That summation of the different masses is just the total mass of the system. So we see our first term is just the kinetic energy from the motion of the whole system. It's one half the total mass times the square of the velocity of the center of mass. The second term is very similar. Each term there is the kinetic energy of each individual particle relative to the center of mass. That's what we're setting out to prove. But we have this additional term, the cross term. What's that? Well, what I need to do is prove that this cross term actually comes out to be zero. So here's our cross term. It's in two pieces, m sub i, v sub i, is different for each individual particle i, but v sub cm is the same for the entire system. So that doesn't need to be in, so that's a common factor for each term in the summation. I can pull it out of the summation and multiply the whole summation by it. So then what we have is the velocity of the center of mass dotted with the momentum of each particle with respect to the center of mass. This is actually the key point here, because that sum, the sum of the momenta of each particle with respect to the center of mass, turns out to be zero, and the rest of the slide is going to be proving that fact. Once we've proven that, then we've proven that the cross term drops to zero, and we've, and we've proved what we've set out to prove. So recall how we've defined v sub i and v sub i prime. v sub i is the velocity of the center of mass plus the velocity of the ith particle with respect to the center of mass. We can recast that as saying v sub i prime, the velocity of each particle with respect to the center of mass, is equal to the particle's velocity, minus the center of mass velocity. So I'll put that expression in for v prime sub i. Now distribute the mass through that sum. We have two summations. The first term is the sum of the momenta of each particle with respect to the center of mass. The second term is the velocity of the center of mass times the mass of the entire system. What's this velocity of the center of mass? Recall that it was the sum of all the momentums of all the particles divided by the sum of the masses. So the total momentum divided by the total mass. We realize that that second term, which is this velocity of the center of mass times the total mass, just becomes the total momentum. So the second part of this cross term becomes the total momentum minus the total momentum, or zero. Since that factor is zero, the cross term is just that zero times the velocity of the center of mass, which is still zero. So in conclusion, 
our expression for the total kinetic energy, loses its last term because the last term is zero. So we've just proved what we set out to prove, is that the total kinetic energy of the system is equal to the kinetic energy from the motion of the whole system, plus a term for the individual particles, the kinetic energy of each particle with respect to the center of mass.